Hey guys, how you doing today? So, in the last video, I showed you how to make this pattern for a North American Arms mini revolver with a one and five eighths inch barrel and a case peanut knife, which is this little guy right here. So, today we're gonna show you how that all comes together. We're gonna do a little video here, build video, and show you how to do it. So. This was the pattern. Check the last video. You'll see this how to do that. So now let's get these cut out. Okay. What you do is you take your pattern, and in the case of this particular pattern, what you're going to do is trace one side of the pattern and you flip it over because you need two sides. So you flip it over, trace the other side. So now when we sandwich them together, they're going to fit good. So Go ahead and cut that in half, and then we are going to cut out the pattern itself. So now we have both pieces cut out evenly, and this is how the holster goes. Pistol goes here, knife's going to go on this side. Now what you're going to do, if you have any really <clears throat> rough jagged edges or anything, you're going to want to go sand these edges smooth. Um, the edges that mate together, don't worry about them yet, because, so look at this pattern. From here to here, you don't need to worry about it because it's going to end up getting sanded anyway, as well as right about here. So go out there and hit this with the sander real quick, make a nice, neat, rounded edge so it looks cool. And then I'll show you a next step in the process after that. Much better, much better. Nice round edge. Okay, I also took the liberty of stamping my logo in the back there. So next on the agenda, we're gonna need to mark where our stitch holes go, whether you're gonna be stitching this by hand if you're just starting out, or if you have a sewing machine so you know where your lines are to follow. So what I go ahead, I don't worry about these edges because I'll mark those uh, with a stitch grouper when it's sanded, but the inside edges here that follow the contour of the pistol, those are the ones we're going to do right now. And all I'm doing is lightly poking a hole just to mark it. You don't need to poke straight through to where you're hitting the table or anything. I'm going to leave this edge too because it'll be sanded and it'll look a lot nicer if it's even from the edge. Boom. And then the same with this over here. I'll just leave this off. I, uh, like I said, I use a sewing machine. So if you are hand stitching, you might still want to mark those. Try it either way, see which way works best for you. I just know that once I sand it, I can run the stitch river along the whole perimeter. Everything will be nice, neat, and even. So there's the first ones. I didn't worry too much about this right now because this is going to end up getting sanded too. So you flip it over, do the same thing over here on the back so you know where your glue lines are going to go. Now, so we could all see that. Get a pin here. I mark all mine with a pin anyway, so I could see too. Like this, and then there is this line right here. So we know this is all going to get stitched here. So we're going to put this, mark this off. 
this is the inside where nobody's going to be able to see anyway. There you go. So this we know is going to be open. This is where the gun's going to go and this is where the knife's going to go. This is where the glue will be. You can write that on there to help yourself remember if you want. All this will be glued. All this will not be glued. Even this part that's going to go together like that, I'm not even I'm not going to glue that. I'll just I'll just stitch it together. You can glue it if you want. Just make sure you don't go too high or too far to the side. And then you're going to do the same thing to this side here, but you're not going to do it to the back side. Just because no matter how hard you try, you might not get it lined up perfectly front and back like that. So I don't ever mark the back because you don't want to see weird holes on the back. So anyway, flip it over again and do the same thing here to this okay, side. Now we have both sides marked off like so. We're actually done with this pattern. We don't need it anymore. So we can set it off to the side, put it back in our... I use a filing cabinet to keep all my patterns nice and neat. On the next step here... What you're gonna do is you're going to take your burnishing tool like this. It's got a groove, there's a couple different, this is what I use for thinner stuff here. And you're gonna go across the open edges here. So don't worry about this part because this is all gonna be sewn and sanded. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go on this open part right here. Use a Make sure you sharpen your stitch, your uh, edge bevelers, people. <laughs> Plus, it's pretty hard to do on camera. Anyway, I can't do this stressed out in front of the camera. What you're going to do is bevel this edge here. And then do it again on the front, like so. Don't worry about that piece, really, because, you know, like I said, it's going to end up getting glued and sanded. Stitch together. So there you go, bevel that side, bevel that side. Then you take your something to burnish it with. I use um, gum tricanth, they have an eco flow, and sometimes I use saddle soap um, and water, which works really good too. So in that instance, I don't have it right here, where's it? I don't have to go search for it. Anyway, I'll burnish these edges. So I'll put the burnishing compound on it, and then I have a burnishing tool. It looks like this here. You pick the smallest groove that it fits in and you just go over it. Uh, it's not so much pressure as it is the friction. So you don't have to push down and grind it. It's just going back and forth as many times as possible to get a real nice smooth edge on there. So this is the only one we need to worry about. This edge here and this here for right now. That's all we need to worry about. So go ahead and get that step done. Now we got those edges burnished nice and smooth. Time to glue this bad boy together. I put glue on both sides. Some glue you don't have to. This is one of them, I think, but I still did on both sides. So, like I said, put the glue in the area we marked for the glue. Like so. Doesn't have to be super thick or anything to where it's smashing out the edges. Just enough to hold it together. Stitches are what keeps it together anyway. Like so, then sandwich together both pieces. Make sure they're lined up best you can. They'll never be perfect. I have die cut stuff that's not even completely perfect. I still sand the edges. <clears throat> so after that, after everything's nice and lined up to the best of your abilities, run some clamps across. I'm gonna run the clamps all around the perimeter 
and we let it dry. This is what it's gonna look like while it's drying. All the glued edges are clamped together. And at this point, you just let it dry for a few hours. This stuff dries pretty quick. I give it a few hours and then I, what we're gonna do after that is I'm gonna sand all the edges smooth and we'll come back and I'll show you how to mark the edges for stitching. I do not wet mold for 24 hours after I glue, even though the glue is probably dry before that. I still wait 24 hours before I introduce any kind of water to the mix. So after this is sewn, it'll sit overnight and then it'll get wet molded. But you know, that'll just be the end of this video here. So that'll be the next step. All right, so, oh, shaky, shaky. So we got all the edges sanded nice and smooth like so. Now before we bevel those edges, we're going to take Stitch Grover and go around the edge, like I said. So starting right here, because this is an opening. We go down and around all the way. Oop, stop right there. Now I'm also going to take this freehand Stitch Grover and do these stitch lines. It's kind of hard to do on camera, but it's the same thing, it just doesn't have an edge guide. Now that you've made a nice stitch groove edge with a flat edge, now we can go ahead and use the beveler and bevel those edges, like so. And don't forget to do the back. Now it's ready for stitching. I don't have a, I don't have a way to hook this up to my sewing machine really. So on the new sewing machine. So anyway, I'm gonna stitch us with my Cobra class four. You could stitch it by hand. At this point, you would take a uh, pricking iron or you could take an awl and do every single hole. Whatever your method would be, mine is gonna be sewing on a sewing machine. So get to it. All right, so it's all stitched up and I put it in some warm water, not hot water, not boiling water, not cold water, warm water. I left it in there for about, hmm, about 15, 30 seconds. You don't need any longer than that. You don't want the leather soaked and saturated. You just want it wet enough to mold. So I have my peanut in a plastic bag to protect it. We'll go ahead and put that in there. This is how you mold. Now off camera. Okay, peanut sitting in there. Do the same thing with the pistol. This is our mold. It's the exact replica of a one and five eighths inch North American arms manual revolver. This would also be a good time to kind of like set the edge, I guess, but it's nice and easy to round over at this point, do some burnishing. The final burnishing goes when it's dry, but that's about it. Now you set this outside to dry here in Florida. It takes about, about three or four hours for it to dry if it's a bright sunny day. If it has to dry inside, it takes about two days. It's a little chilly out here today, but the sun is out, so we'll see how dry they get today. Uh, since this is a pocket holster, I will leave the mold in because you want pocket holsters real loose so it's easy to get the gun in and out. I won't leave the knife in though because I don't want to leave my knife in a wet holster mold. It should be fine. It won't shrink too much being the size that it is. We'll come back once it's all dry. So... This is what it looks like after it's wet molded. Um, this has also been, I've burnished the edges and I've put the resolene on it. It's dried for a few days. So this will be your final product. It's for, like I said, for the inch and five eighths and a case peanut. pocket combo. It'll fit nice and neat in your pocket. Once it breaks in, it'll be even better. 
nice little addition to your pocket. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know if you want to see something else in the future. Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.